Today we're counting down the top 10 lost buildings in Toronto. Coming in at number 10 is Maple Leaf Stadium, which was at the corner of Bathurst and Lakeshore. Maple Leaf Stadium was a jewel box style baseball stadium that sat at the corner of Bathurst and Lakeshore from 1926 until its demise in 1968. This 23,000 capacity field was home to the Toronto Maple Leafs baseball team for decades. Coming in at number nine is the Registry of Deeds and Land Titles building, which is now where Nathan Phillips Square is. Construction of the Registry of Deeds and Land Titles building was started in 1914, slowing down during the war, but finishing by 1917. The building, designed by Charles S. Cobb, was meant to be part of a larger collection of city-owned buildings and gardens on the location of modern-day Nathan Phillips Square. But with war, the Great Depression, and bureaucratic fumbling, the building would stand there awkwardly alone until its demolishing in 1964 with the creation of what we now call New City Hall. Number eight is the Odeon Theater, which was at Carlton and Young. The Toronto Odeon Theater opened in September of 1948 near the corner of Carlton and Young, next to the relatively new Maple Leaf Gardens. This 2300 plush seat theater took two years and two and a half million dollars to build. But according to the city, celebrities, and everyone in between, it was well worth it. The cinema would wane in popularity and with a whopping capacity of over 2000 seats quickly become economically unfeasible. The theater would sadly close in 1975 and shortly after be demolished. Number seven is the Four Seasons Inn on the Park. The Four Seasons The Inn on the Park was built in the early 1960s in what was believed to be a remote area by Eglinton and Leslie. Designed by renowned architect Peter Dickinson, the hotel would quickly become one of the most sought after resort styled locations in Toronto and housed the city's very first discotheque. The Inn on the Park would become the second hotel built by the Four Seasons Hotel chain, the first of which being the Four Seasons Motor Hotel on Jarvis Street, now also kaput. The Inn on the Park would be the taste of the town until a tragic fire in 1981, which would take the lives of six hotel patrons. The hotel would fall into disrepair, often being compared to the hotel in the film The Shining, before being sold in the mid-1990s. After a brief stint as the Holiday Inn Don Valley Hotel, before being sold off, and becoming a car dealership. Number six is the original Trinity College, which was where Trinity Bellwoods is now. The original University of Toronto Trinity College building was built in the middle of present-day Trinity Bellwoods Park in 1852. The building would be an active university until its move to its current location on the U of T grounds in the 1920s. The structure would stay on the Trinity Bellwoods grounds as the Kiwanis Club, military housing, and a variety of other things before being demolished in the early 1950s. The only remaining structures being the gates at Strawn and Queen and the former St. Hilda's College, which is now the John Gibson House. Number five is the iconic and sadly gone Honest Ed's building, which was at Bloor and Bathurst. It's hard to name a more visible and flashy building in Toronto history. The Honest Ed's many of us know stretched from Bathurst down Bloor until Markham Street. The original building was actually at Markham and Bloor, followed by enlarging eastward and finally taking over the entire second block towards Bathurst in the very beginning of the 1980s. The place that welcomed everyone from movie stars to royalty to the newly arrived immigrant population would fall into disrepair in its final two decades and would be sold by Ed Mervish's son, David, and close permanently on December 31st, 2016. It is now being developed as a condominium project. Number four is the original Dufferin Gates. The entrance to the CNE along Dufferin has stood there in some fashion since the inauguration of the exhibition in 1879. Since then, numerous gates have stood. In 1910, George W. Gwynlock crafted a large, elaborate, and bow art-styled gate at the entrance to the fair. Until the creation of the Prince's Gates on the east side of the exhibition in 1927, the main entrance had been along Dufferin. During World War I, the CNE grounds acted as a military training grounds for Canadian troops. The gates were also the departure point for many soldiers shipping off to Europe and beyond. Following the war, the gates were referred to as the Dufferin Memorial Gates, until the destruction of them in 1958 to make way for the Gardiner Expressway. The following year, the current gates would be constructed. Number three was the Toronto Star Building on King Street. 
The old Toronto Star Building was a beautiful Art Deco 22-floor structure at 80 King Street West. Constructed in 1929 for one and a half million dollars. Toronto Star paper boy, Joe Schuster, would outgrow his job with the paper, move to Cleveland where him and his friend Jerry Siegel would create the comic book series, Superman. Schuster would model the fictional Daily Planet newspaper after his admiration for the 80 King Street West building. In fact, the first few issues of Superman had Clark Kent working at the Daily Star building. The beautiful building would be torn down in the early 1970s to make way for the first Canadian place tower. Number two is Chorley Park. It was built in Rosedale between 1911 and 1915 and was at the time the most expensive residence ever made in Canada. The opulent manor was regal, but to many represented excess beyond the province's weight. In 1960, just 45 years young at the time, Toronto Mayor Nathan Phillips would have the city purchase the building for $100,000 and proceed to demolish it in its entirety in 1961. The location is still called Chorley Park, now simply a park space in Rosedale. And finally, number one, the long but not forgotten Crystal Palace building. The second version of the Palace of Industry, known often and most commonly as the Crystal Palace, opened on the current grounds of the CNE grounds in the late 1870s. The building, modeled after London, England's Crystal Palace. The large three-storied building was over 40,000 square feet big and the main attraction of what would soon be named the CNE, the Canadian National Exhibition. Here is the view facing north towards the building from its Dufferin Street waterfront. The iconic building would sit in its place for a bit over two decades before finally falling victim to fire. The wooden structure would be replaced by the present day horticultural building in 1907, which was until recently Music Nightclub now an event space. A far cry from what had been Toronto's most iconic structure.